When I came to Bombay, I still remember, you know, I would cry for many months because I just couldn't handle this huge, big city. So, but the only determination I had that I won't go back. Company which has been a very big, big success for me is KAI Industries. I bought that company at 75 crore market cap. Today, 30,000 crore market cap. Two third of our population is working age. We are median. Our median is 28 years old. China is 38 years old. We will remain youngest nation for next 50 years. This cannot be reversed. My morning thing was to start with you know Economic Times and Times of India and my dictionary. So I would. So English, you were self-taught. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely. Yeah. Wow, really? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yes, yes. So you know, I would underline paper one sentence, then I would four words, then would learn meaning, try to understand. So first, I would read normal Times, then I would go to Economic Times because you had to learn the market <laughs> jargon and all that. Why do we have so much depression and emotional instability? Because you know, you put your holiday picture on Facebook. People are putting only good pictures. Just on the Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Fact is that 99% of the time they are having rough time, and probably 1% they are putting there, right? India is innovating scale at low cost. Again, if you tell any you know foreigner that we get unlimited data in less than two dollars, it is a you know shocker to them, yeah. right? So UPI again that you can pay two rupees through, it's shocker to them. Even 10 right? minute delivery, right? It's delivery nowhere in the yeah, world. In the yeah. world right? Hi guys, welcome to I Did It My Way. My guest on the podcast today is someone who needs no introduction, someone who's been in the market for over 25 years now and has been a big name in many ways contributing to the ecosystem in the stock market. Vikas Kimani of Carlyle Capital is here with us. Vikas, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, pleasure. It's always good to chat with you, Sonia. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, we always start with how is the market looking? Where is the market going? But that's not the focus of the podcast. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You've had enough of talking about the yes. market, right? For a while. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> For a lifetime, maybe. <laughs> but I want to know a little bit about your story because uh, I remember you telling me that you have come from a very, very humble background and now you've sort of reached this level. So, tell us from the start, from where you can remember. Sure. So I was born in a very small village called Mandawa. It's in, in Rajasthan near Jinju district. And where we were born in a very joint family. Um, my father was always kind of away ever since I can remember. He was he has a moving job. He used to run a tourist bus. And uh, he would visit once in a while. So I kind of grew up pretty much with my grandfather. And uh, he had a small shop of clothes, cloth merchant in, in the village. And my uncle also, you know, joined him later on and he was doing a few more businesses. So how long did you live in the village for? I was there till I was in ninth standard. So I grew up there and throughout that, you know, uh, I would, I was there in the village. And uh, so was there any, uh, I mean, it was a business background, I assume, right, of your grandfather? Yeah, I mean, it was a clothes shop, you know, in, in the market. So the village is small shops, right, you know, that's how. So then how did you get introduced to the stock market? <laughs> I mean, that was much later. So, you know, uh, I, I came to uh, Surat with my father. All of us migrated. And that was a time when... And I, I kind of grew up always... Uh, when I came to Surat, I would read up a lot, lot about businessmen. You know, those days, Aditya Birla Saab and, you know, Dhiru Ambani and all those things. So every time I would see them on TV, I would get glued to that. Okay. And it kind of shaped my... And that's the time when Harshad Mehta also started happening in 91, 92. And having seen extreme sort of constraints, always wanted to make a lot of money, right? So, what allured to that kind of thing. So, I said, Paisa banana hai, So, you had a lot of money problems at home when you were small? Yeah, I mean, it, it was, you know, very basic life, well, you know, constrained environment. Yeah, but it's not like, you know, we were poor, but it was very, any, you know, middle class uh, or lower middle class house kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, so, so, I mean, as we moved to Surat from there, I said, this is not my... So I studied there for five, six years for my college and then said, this is not my calling. My calling is Bombay because that is where, you know, I want to make my career. So I asked my daughter, father, can I go to Bombay? And he said, yeah, sure, why not? So I did my CA from Bombay. So you said your father was away a lot. He was yeah, working yes, and yes. your grandfather was a big influence on you. Yes. Did he also influence your thinking about business, about money and did he shape that in you? Yes, in the sense like, you know, I would every day I would go from school, there was nothing else. So I would go to his shop, sit with him, he will teach me. So I remember making his account through the, in the evening, helping him out, 
you know selling to the customers you know so that kind of you know negotiating you know how does customer think uh, you know and my uncle had started transport business so i had to kind of unload all the goods would come get it delivered make receipts collect payments so i could understand reasonably at a very early age different aspects of the business, uh, business. though it was very small business but you know how how what it takes to you know deal with customer what are the key things how you make profit you know wow and there have been some great experience so yes, early yes, on yes and those days there were very few i mean the, we didn't have even calculators so you had to like do manually literally everything you know forget uh, computer so yeah so your mental math your calculation everything start building and you don't there's no specific thing but you start building that intuitively right and thinking in that direction thinking in that direction that how it gets built um, you know how, what, what business is all about which i think my kids are now studying that as a project <laughs> <laughs> yeah but you had the real life yeah. experience right correct correct so, so in which year did you come to bombay i came to bombay in 95 you okay. know yeah so till you know i did my graduation and then came to 95 then till 97 i did my ca but you know and those days a job was very difficult to get and so wherever i mean so i got my first job in sr investments so that's where i and it, it was nothing to do with capital markets but i still took because i had to take something right so but always was looking for for a you know sort of capital market opening i applied to icic securities got rejected <laughs> and you know i couldn't speak english those days properly so you know i was like you know fumbling in the interview so that a lot. was a hindrance for you in the big interview. hindrance initially and when i came to bombay i still remember you know i would cry for many months because i just couldn't handle this huge big city so but only determination i had is wapas nahi jaunga aur paisa banana hai ha aur paisa banana hai something you have to do right also i think during harshad mehta time i had lost my father's money i was investing and all and that was a very big pain point for me that you know he was not a rich man either i mean i lost almost 40 50 percent of his capital that was how much at that time 4 5 lakhs rupees you know that time it was a lot of money at least for him uh and uh, so i said no i have to do something you know i personally was very very distraught with the whole fact so i said yeah i have to do so i came i started building and then so seekhna seekhne ke baad karenge kuch so when did the real stock market bug bite you so, so i kept on so it bit in harshad mehta time only right but that time i didn't know how to do right you know like I, most people start fail and so i kept on trying in my little own way but if you ask me my real you know investing journey and then i got a job in isec uh, you know after one once getting rejected oh, you finally got the job yeah i told him then i got in the back office so i said you take me at least i'll figure out how to <laughs> so move up move up yeah so they took me in back office i said fine you know and then i kind of moved up and uh, understood equity derivatives which was a till then i was really not you know i was investing a little bit of my capital but it was not like i had some lot of knowledge and you know but real journey started only after if you ask me 2004 5 uh, you know or somewhat journey started 2004 5 but the real 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 journey started after 2012 uh, you know when when you know i i was really spending a lot of time on equity research in edlo wise when i was giving the shape to entire equity research completely uh, rechanging the health, the way we looked at it that time i kind of uh, started spending a lot of time and from there my investing success has been good okay so now what how much do you manage in terms of overall money and you know what are you sitting at in terms of you know your position at carnelian now so we manage about approximately 6000 crores right now we started in 2009 as a firm uh, so that time we just started with 200 crores but now we manage about 6000 crore work with pretty much large leading families of the country so yeah it's been a good journey it has and the reason i asked you is because you know from someone who started off in a village to now managing 6000 crores worth of people's money it's been a really long journey for you and uh, i'm sure you've had your hits and misses your struggles and failures and everything Absolutely. what's the overall journey been like so it's been you know i mean it's after nothing is easy but it's been fun i mean i am a very optimist guy so you know one thing is that given a setback i never feel much dejected i mean maybe for a few hours few days it'll be there but i can come back very fast so i i know don't remember my you no know, setbacks very often you know i forget and move on in life right and i think that's that's what has been you know, probably god's gift to me uh lots of challenges you know you can like starting with i told you that i didn't know how to speak english in the city where you know but i didn't know anything about investing i didn't know anything about you know companies corporates everything learned from here but fortunately the city has been very kind lot of people who supported you know whom you meet through the journey uh, but one thing is that if you have real desire to do something i think things open up you know just think get paved so so any uh, mentors that you ha- i'm sure you had many 
but anyone that stands out for you that was little you know defining in your life i i wouldn't say or, one or shaped your uh, any mentor that shaped your market the perspective i mean again i can't say one person because i believe that in reading you know lots of books and so one one thing which happened is when i joined edelweiss in 2002 there there was a good reading culture everybody would read and before that you will not will be surprised that i would never read i would just kind of you know talk and and that from there my reading journey started so i read lots of book on investing from there and that was actually if you ask me my real real true beginning of interest in the investing journey you know because when you read you see so many like i read this book market wizards right it has three series if you read those interviews it just blows your mind away because so many people have succeeded failed succeeded you know how and they those each of the guys have you know if, if you read the life journey exciting so that is was an inspiring inspiration for me i said you know if so many people can do it anybody can do it correct it's interesting you say that any books that stand out for you for young investors to read today i think i would start say like start with this whole stock stock market wizards you know which has interview of many people so it's not like one journey one you are if you read one person one investor you will say this is how life should be but i would say that has so many interviews of traders investors successful failed ones then another one which is reminiscence of a stock trader or operator right which is again jesse livermore again after 100 years also it means so relevant you can't you have it has so many lessons and you can keep reading it um, the one which i which has a huge influence on me is uh, poor charlie's almanac not only in investing but even in life it's again in my opinion uh, the book anybody and everybody should read and i i read that book five times and every time you read this this you know you find something, something new, to new to learn because it's a any heavy book to read but you know it is a like lifetime of wisdom in that so vikas tell me what does it take to become a successful investor in this market and i'm asking you because you know we all know that when the market falls you should buy be greedy when the market is fearful but when actually the opportunity comes is very hard to go out and put your money you know uh, so according to you what does it take to become a successful investor in the market i mean there's no one thing but many things like i think first of all you have to be a constant learner you know you have to be observing and you know you can't be say that i this is my style everything changes with time and also you you have to be constant observer learner and curious that how things work secondly i think you have to be very very patient you market will prove you many times wrong so you know you have to be patient in in face of adversity i have seen what has not worked for me in short term has worked for me in long term so patience is actually really really very important according to me the today the thing is that most people want to make money overnight or very fast and that is a short short recipe for disaster you can be successful once twice thrice but you can't be consistently successful making money fast but if you do things right right way look at business look at i mean it sounds boring but actually that's how it is right so if you think and one what has worked for me is that you don't need to seek approval from others consensus is never right actually you know when you seek approval from consensus you know so if you can take view most of the big money in my opinion at least for me it has made for me is when i have taken non consensus views uh, understanding this business can if the dust is settles how it can play out that is where the big money gets made so can you give us some examples what was a big non consensus view you took recently which worked for you so i can tell you you know one of the big thing which we we in fact after we started carnelian and i'll tell you one 10 year old story also <laughs> but when we started carnelian post pandemic everybody was you know distraught of course it was a bad time but somewhere i think we said in crisis also there is an opportunity what could be this and we started looking at things and somewhere in july august i started connecting and believing that the manufacturing is going to pick up big time in india you know and there were reasons why you know we did study and of course government was pushing pli but more importantly you know sentiment against china was beginning to play in you know in 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 many more many ways and when we spoke to few companies we could see the the hints and validation of some of them and nobody was even talking about it so we betted big time in in manufacturing we launched a manufacturing fund in august 2020 and started investing from october 2020 wow that has delivered 45% cagr versus benchmark of 25%. So 20% outperform. But more importantly stocks have become in 3 years time 6x 7x and still looks very good, right? That was a complete non consensus and I think many people told us that you will be wrong in this including some of the guys who were in manufacturing. Okay. And you still took that call. We still took that call because we could see the validation of the fact. And once you have a conviction and risk reward in your favor that time then you don't listen, right? 
so, so that was man- one was manufacturing manufacturing we took you know and i think you know some of my big success of investing like i remember 2012 you know the 12 13 period lot of industries were out like one company which has been a very big big success for me is kai industries i bought that company at 75 crore market cap today it's 30000 crore market cap wow right now that time most people gave bankruptcy to that company kind of situation to that company right a uh, uh, almost 1500 crore top line company with a 75 crore market cap right it's kind of and 175 crore ebitda of course there was a lot of debt which was going into the but thing is that company survived in the worst of the time and you know the integrity of the promoter was very high i mean that i saw through the crisis right and they were determined most other companies kind of went down got bankrupt defaulted they never did and they were pivoting their business into consumer in that period only in bad times they were kind of trying to look for a better future kei kei and that has been a great story you know if you ask me so like this but that time nobody looked at it and many people looked at it also looked at the trade as it's when you like a right guy right promoter you just bet and stay invested churning does not make money so when you pick a company do you what are the three or four things you look at you look at the right promoter good corporate governance uh, maybe a strong market uh, strategy for them uh, you know a moat good moat but what else what else do you look at so i think single biggest factor i use is management management is like three things i look at competence integrity and drive if you in any management if you see three these three things you know you will by and large you know should but be integrity okay integrity is <laughs> you can figure out like i said very debatable like right i'm telling you right but like let's say kei industries when entire market was you know those were fccb issues were there they had opportunity to reduce the debt liability and you know settle it they did not settle they paid full amount that shows the integrity they didn't default that so i'm saying integrity is not necessary i mean it is when you intent also intent also yeah. niyat kaisi hai ha right that is important you know so so and you can figure that out you know if you watch somebody for a long period of time so you need to have history also bit of it you know to just niyat and Correct. integrity so that is what you know so in my opinion 70 80% of everything returns are determined by the by the uh you know by management by the promoter or the management, management right of course business quality has to be there all those things have to be seen so what do you do when you know i'm i'm talking because it's recent events right you now it's become like the se- season of ceo resignations yes. so today we saw wipro then there was bandhan bank i mean these are by and large strong businesses but wipro for example is having a lot of management churn at the top level what do you do at a time like this so that's the reason it's not going on anywhere if you see it's not it industry tcs has grown infosys has grown right but wipro is not going anywhere for like almost more than a decade or more than that rather right so that clearly again says the value of the point i said right that management matters i mean tcs one point in time was considered lagard but after chandra took over in 2009 after in five year period you know it 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 became almost uh, from 50000 crore market cap to 4 lakh crore market cap right in five year period right so management what is what matters given the same industry and everything Correct. so we pay a lot of attention to that and my favorite you know investing style is what where i refer is magic basket where you get both in earnings growth and valuation derating when both comes together you make a lot of money right and that is what you have to keep looking for that's my one of the favorite basket i mean that's where at least i have created a lot of money and you know this management uh, thing we were talking about strength in the promoters uh, we were having this discussion about uh, aditya birla group right uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago when we were talking about vishaka mulya taking yes. over and how she sort of changed the face of it i think that's another example of how uh, businesses grow after good a uh, management comes on board absolutely that's what it matters i think management matters the most in whatever business so of course you good business. and you know if business is weak management will make that also strong because ultimately management is also responsible to evolving the business model based on the changing market no market scenario remains same so if you have good capable management then they will morph the business into the way it should be rather than so ultimately the starting point is business eh, management according to me correct so you said kei industries was one where you were a big contrarian a buyer there any other instance i see bank again you know 2019 we had a large position in icsa bank we looked at around nobody had any position in icsa bank our thing was good business icsa bank brand technology balance sheet everything was good credit cycle was behind and the leadership change happened in october 18 and i was like impressed when i met sandeep in 2019 that in 6 months time he changed the culture and strategy of the bank and i was blown away that if and then we spoke to a lot of people beneath and we got a similar feedback that bank is energized and uh, you know one goal one you know everybody is kind of focused in making bank successful 
that's all you need so you were the early identifiers of sandeep bhakshi and his yeah, uh, yeah we bought at 262 70 bucks yeah mm. so interesting okay so you said management is the most important thing intent of the management as well uh, anything else that you look at so and other thing which i look at is that you know of course there's a tailwind is on there or not on the business and all like you know manufacturing is when you, when you see the change in the industry structure happening hmm. right because that is where you make big big money you know because then you can go a very you know long 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 way right so my thing favorite thing is that can you know today share price can become eps or no that is where you get multi bagger right so you know typically look for those companies who are 10 to 15 20 years and my longest holding is 20 years right or 20 20 22 years right so you just stay invested uh, if you don't need money i mean i just uh, for your consumption but if you are just moving from one stock to another stock doesn't make sense as long as you have the right uh, recipe so so management is definitely business tailwind cycle opportunity size how large it is you don't want to be in a small opportunity size right as long as the big so there's a you know i always say that if there's a tailwind go and park yourself on right ship it will take you far how far nobody knows right correct correct and but all you need to look for is tailwind fortunately we are in a and time and how long it will take you to get there also nobody knows yeah. but fortunately we are in a time where there's a tailwind for india correct you know that is a big thing that today why you know at least makes me so bullish on india there's a tailwind for a country as a whole so everybody should be parking on this country and you know just it will go very far is my belief is there any argument to believe that maybe we are overstating india's growth story i mean argument can be made always both side depends on what you believe in and what you know i always believe that you know right now you can't bet against india india is the only market in the world you know which has which has everything going for it and what which has gone and one overarching trend apart from the governance and we have a strong leadership which is you can't in, you know undermine which cannot be reversed is our demographic two third of our population is working age we are median our median is 28 years old china is 38 years old we will remain youngest nation for next 50 years this cannot be reversed china is 38 and aging and because of the social structure of china the one child policy each mm-hmm. couple has four dependent parents and their own children so you have lot of social structure problem in china Correct. so india will remain one of this can't be reversed so you can argue it can go slow it can but if you have a strong governance so like there's a concept that you know you have a potential energy right and to convert that potential energy into kinetic energy you need a catalyst sometime gravity or something else in india we always had a demographic dividend you know which sometimes was referred as a demographic liability but we had that potential energy never converted into kinetic but we had a catalyst in form of the you know prime minister modi who came and changed the entire we brought lot of gravity and that potential energy got converted into kinetic energy is now getting converted, converted. into kinetic and that kinetic energy once it's converted then i think its own uh, virtuous cycle starts and that i see over over next uh, you know a uh, couple of decades to continue so it's a great time to be in the stock markets right absolutely in the, in, in the in the country in the country okay in, doing business <laughs> doing in the country i think you know we are all lucky to be part of this uh, a uh, golden period of indian story so for that average so my aim with this podcast is any average young indian who's watching right now should get to learn something right if he's just entering the workforce if he's just uh, taking up a job or becoming an entrepreneur or getting into the stock markets uh, where should his focus lie whatever area you are in do with lot of long term thinking you will go very far india is a great opportunity and it's not that you don't need to copy somebody else India is such a diverse thing that whatever you are good at it just focus and be at it just don't keep today unfortunately with youngsters there is lot of uh, fomo and there is lot of because of the social media and advent of all this you know you, know, you only always most impatience. of the impatience and wanting to copy others you know you see somebody successful and you want to be somebody like this you don't have to be like somebody like whatever area you are good at we have seen number of stories which are you know which in each of the field people have excelled and progressed and become legends right so don't try to copy any whatever you are good at focus stay at it and i can tell you 10 year compounding in anything works mm. so coming back to your story right yes. uh, we had i mean you were telling us how um when you started you've come from a small village to mumbai and you were a bit overwhelmed you got rejected in your first job and it was more because of the language barrier as well uh, how did you overcome all that step by step So it's like again you could try I remember when so I didn't know how to speak English right so every day morning I so would So you didn't pick, come from an English medium no, of no, course I, not you were in the vernacular yeah, right? yeah so absolutely and So how very, did you learn then 
so i would read every day newspaper my morning thing was start with you know economic times and times of india and my dictionary so i would so english you were self taught yeah yeah so absolutely yeah. wow really <laughs> i didn't know that yes yes so i had a dictionary and those days internet was also not there so you know i would mo- underline paper one sentence then i would fa- forward then would learn meaning try to understand so this was like everyday affair for me so at what age did you do all this i mean i write till i i, I was in bombay till 97 98 right first i would read normal times then i would would go to economic times because you had to learn the market yeah. jargon so right? <laughs> normal words were tough for you yeah, i'm sure yeah. economic so, times yeah, yeah. were been tougher so you know i would do that you know i used to stay in hostels so first i didn't have new so i would go to library pick up newspaper you know and do things so it's a, it's a, and again once you then start talking with people you know i remember my first time i interview i did on cnbc i started fumbling <laughs> <laughs> udian was there and like i i was blank <laughs> so but you know my thing is that you know at least try and fail try and fail you will so anything in my opinion never worry i fortunately again i never what people will think of me try fail it's okay you know people will laugh at you it's fine you also laugh with them <laughs> <laughs> okay that's a great lesson for me but tell me does it when you come from a small bag humble background uh, is your hunger for success even larger you think absolutely i think you know you are two things one is that you know uh, hunger for success is larger secondly you don't take setbacks very seriously one of the biggest thing i seen in the younger generation especially from like maybe my kids or you know our future generation or right you know you feel very overwhelmed with small setbacks people who come from humble background unke liye itna jhatke lagte rehte hain ki ek aur jhatka chalega aage chalo you know you don't feel insulted very often low base effect low base effect right you don't ins- feel insulted very often by the way people will say something you will listen to you know and pass it right so your ego is low so what are the key things your ego is low you don't feel insulted you don't feel setback your expectations are low and in my opinion one of the biggest thing again to have a happy life is low expectation mm-hmm. right so when you have low expectation whatever comes to you you are happy happy life and happy marriage, happy marriage yes. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely that i know with harder way <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no so low expectations low ego humble background all of it right but even in the markets when you invest the psychology of money also sometimes plays out yes. differently yes so uh, on the psychological part what has helped you become a sort of a uh, astute investor very good question so i i and i'll probably connect this with my personal journey so i was a very very short tempered impatient child and even when i came to bombay i was like that only right and despite few years in corporate life but once i think uh, you know i was gifted a book called emotional intelligence by rashesh uh, you know and when i read that book you know i started understanding what is psychology till then i had zero idea about psychology so i read that book and i related a lot of things how to handle myself because you know it, what does a book talk about so it's all about emotional intelligence is that you know how you conduct yourself self awareness about yourself See, most of the time we are not aware so about ourselves so self awareness self management right and as i read that book many times i started understanding psychology you know within myself and you know about others in my opinion i would say anybody who wants to be a good investor must read many books on psychology and after that i lay my hands on anything and everything i read you know j krishna murthy to anything i mean den den kalyan kanman and you know i mean lot of books on anything which is to do with the emotional aspect of it i read i read lot of spiritual books that also is again to do with the emotional it right. it makes you better investor yeah, for sure it makes course. you better human being for sure but also it makes you be- better investor because in it's not two different fundas right so actually that happened with me as well so for 3 4 years ago i went through a personal setback health setback when my child was very unwell mm-hmm. and then i kind of mentally crashed you know and to come out of that i started reading a lot of spiritual books uh, jiddu krishnamurti and yeah. osho and all of that and that really helped me and i think it helped me professionally as well yes. i mean not just personally and to recover from that setback but professionally i think it takes you far uh, as well but for you spiritually what do you what do you like reading again i read everything i've read many books on gita i have read you know i read vipassana i i practice vipassana so around that anything i read i mean there is a small column every day in comes in speaking tree correct, in times correct. but that's how i start reading my newspaper every day a lot of youngsters believe or think that you know spirituality is for after you reach particular age in fact i feel other way around yeah. i wish i got introduced to this when i was kid Same. my life would have been different right so you know i think it's it's a you know game changing uh, uh journey once you get introduced to spirituality you think take life very differently correct and gita is in my opinion uh, uh, any lessons from the gita that stand out for you 
I'm sure there are many, but anything there that you many, can remember. I think, you know, uh, from the book also, but more important, like, you know, there's a say, saying by Ram Sukhdaji Maharaj, Karne mein saavdhan raho, hone mein santos rakho. Do your best and be content with what is outcome. And if you just follow this, I'm telling you, you cannot have stress. You know, this is like if you ask me two line, a simple line, but has a very, very deep meaning and it has had huge impact on me. And every time things don't work your way, hone mein santosh rakho. Just do the work and leave the rest. Yeah, yeah. leave the I mean, do your best. A lot of people, I don't know whether it's social media or whether it's seeing more of other people's lives. A lot of people feel disgruntled despite having it all. Is that something you face in your industry as well? Absolutely, in everything, you know, see, FOMO is what drives everything, right? Let's say, first talk about personal life. I think, why do we have so much depression and emotional instability? Because, you know, you put your holiday picture on Facebook, everybody puts that, so we think that everybody is only having a good time, except me. But the fact is that people are putting only good pictures on the Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> they are not putting their... No one puts their pictures crying. Crying on the Facebook, <laughs> yeah. right? Saying I had a rough time. But the fact is that 99% of the time they are having a rough time and probably 1% they are putting there, right? And that creates huge amount of, you know, setback for people who are all the time scrolling and seeing happy faces and saying, oh, my life is sad and everybody else is having a good time. And that's a very big problem. Same thing if you see in markets, investing, right? People who invest out of FOMO, you know, you keep missing and you keep looking at others and start buying. The other thing saying that, how should, what should my investing style is, what is my objective, somebody will meet you in party and say, I bought this, this shares, it has become 5x and suddenly you feel let down and say, oh, I should be also buying something like this. And a lot of fund managers must be facing that anxiety for sure because their performance is documented, right? So, one fund manager against another, you can always feel either happy or sad. Correct. So, I mean, if, if you But how do you deal that, with that? So, frankly speaking, good part is that again, we don't compare too much. <laughs> I mean, I, I, if you ask me, I, I don't even know if you ask me who's best in my fund management industry today. I look at only my performance and say, as long as we are doing good, it's fine. Let others do whatever they are doing because see, ultimately, I can't do anything else. I don't want to benchmark with somebody else and say, You can't even replicate that I can't replicate yeah. that. If he's good, better than me, please give money to him. I mean, I, we can do what we, and you, many people don't believe that, I, but I genuinely don't know whose performance is how much. I mean, just stay to your thing because what matters to me is, uh, and you go to basics, saying that, are you doing better? If you are not doing better, why you are not doing better? Analyze and correct that. That is the loop which you should work on that. Correct, correct. You're also uh, Vikas a marathoner, right? Yes. Tell us about that part. How did you get into it? Because, uh, I mean, sports is medicine for everyone. But uh, how has it worked for you? So, I, as a child, I never played any sport, by the way, you know. So, <laughs> so I mean, I, I all I did was, you know, study and work and whatever, you know. So, I think that's the case with our generation overall, <laughs> yes. right? Our parents focus more on our studies yes, rather than sport. Yes. But I'm glad it's changing now. Yes, it's changing, yeah. So, when I came to Bombay, I think a marathon was starting. Stanchart had first time, you know, I had joined Edelweiss in 2004, I think, or 4-4. Four, four. It started, so I signed up for everybody, few people, and that's how journey started. And then it doesn't continue to be formed a group. And, and I generally like, uh, you know, I'm a generally fitness guy. So generally like to do something. I used to do yoga and still do the yoga on a regular basis. But then marathon started. I kept on running. But I do different, different kind of uh, physical thing. I did two years ago, Everest Base Camp. You know, wow, how yeah. was that? Oh, phenomenal, phenomenal. It was great. Anything you do with the, you know, uh, nature is, is great. And it was a great experience. Nine days, no connectivity. You had time with the nature and your friends. And having a good time. I just went with my daughter to Gulmak for skiing. Again, a great time. It, was that your first time skiing? Yes. Nice. <laughs> so, you know, anything when you time spend time with nature. And I just love doing that. So, so you know, going back to, uh, you know, your childhood, you said that you were impatient. You were a bit, uh, you know, you wanted things to happen fast. What else were some of the, not setbacks, but some of the personality traits that you have sort of corrected over the years which helped you in your professional journey also my wife still says that i'm impatient so <laughs> <laughs> so all a, spouses say that <laughs> so it's a degree look again you know it takes time for your thing to so i, I always say that i am not perfect it's i'm less worse than i was before <laughs> so that's the only it's a journey so i think self improvement is a journey which uh, starts with uh, you know self introspection and i remember you know and fortunately a lot of people have given me gifts of in form of book any book. So, you know, five, somebody, a friend of mine gave me a book called You Can Win of Shiv Khera. Correct. That's how it started. So, you can keep reading and, you know, you can keep benchmarking. So, I remember 2001, I listed out 10 weaknesses in me and then I kind of benchmark them every year saying, how have I got better? Have I got better? Now, of course, of late, I've stopped doing it because now I'm self-aware in general. But, so that kind of helps you. So, you've done a lot of the internal work. Also. Internal work. So, yeah. you, it's all with, 
intent your own self introspection that you know and that start with by the way awareness admit uh, you know i remember in acceptance. acceptance that you to accept that you know you are this is how you are you need acceptance is half the job done and then you will start working on it then once you accept and start working on help will come from more than many ways coming back to the markets and you know your journey there you were talking about how the big growth story is india itself right so for someone who wants to get into your industry or wants to become uh, an investor and at some point reach success what are the three or four things that you would tell them hey i think don't believe that it's late uh, you know it has still just started so every time i often very often hear that you know are itna ho gaya abhi to it's already done you know it's never too late it's it's so you know jab jago tab savera and i think india is still long long way to go uh, so i think you know do that and again secondly i would say that uh, uh, don't be in a hurry uh, do basics you know it there's no shortcut to success in 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 any industry so is in our uh, it appears uh, you know uh, glamorous from outside uh, and uh, cnbc makes it more glamorous <laughs> <laughs> so you know but uh, you know it appears glamorous but yeah in the scenes the total different <laughs> issue <laughs> yes, so it is i mean hard work sweat everything is there toil you have to you know everything is there so so you got to kind of uh, focus on that and if you have long term horizon i mean stay focused on learning if you keep learning you will fumble come back come you will fumble but that's the only way to go there is no there's something called your software has to get built right you know what i can analyze in let's say 10 minutes it takes many years to build right so that software or algo as we call in our mind which is written through you know trial and error everybody needs to develop that to be successful so and uh, so to do that you have to ready to ready to so read be curious learning is all around you know you can learn all around you know people will you just have to open up your mind to it it's open to your mind but for someone who's come from a small town and a humble background uh, do you think being from a privileged background being from a metro tier one city is uh, is is a bit of a uh, hindrance or a handicap yeah, it is a handicap you it think so it is 100% see of course there's advantages also i'm not saying that you know so it's saying it'll be wrong but you know it's a handicap in the sense that you don't see you don't connect to the ground in those many ways right uh so uh privileged background stops you like i think my kids probably don't have access to or what i did i tried and I, you know suffered they won't go through that but i'm not saying that's the only way to success right you know people who are privileged they also have a advantage have of access. having education access a 360 degree perspective from the top that also is helpful you know so i'm not saying that uh, and the funds <laughs> and the funds i'm not saying that's the only way to <laughs> look so, but i'm saying the if you have intent desire i mean those hand what handicaps we had when we came we, i didn't know anybody in bombay when i came you know so you have to build all of them you know so so those disadvantages are should not deter anybody who lives outside in outside metros or who who does not have that kind of privilege mm. you know they they should not limit you that they should not put cap on your uh thinking thinking okay okay how did you decide to leave edelweiss when you were at the top yeah so I, again <laughs> i always wanted to start something my wife actually is a big ins- inspiration on that she said i always wanted to marry a businessman <laughs> and i said okay <laughs> so yeah i used to run my grandfather's business when i was very small <laughs> so i said no problem so anyway I, and i always wanted to start something entrepreneurial and you know being corporate cushy job was never my style you know and edelweiss was a great entrepreneurial journey i feel 17 years right so when i left you know you all sudden when you are successful ego builds right you know you you create a self image and your own ego right and that fear of failure what next you know you need you and i build that you need to prove yourself right you know you are living at such a position now you can't be doing uh, you know you need to prove yourself and you have to and i had few ideas in mind right i had two three acquisitions in mind everything what i wanted to do failed nothing worked really what what all did you do I after edelweiss i mean i tried to acquire you know idfc securities ilfs uh, you know and then idba mutual fund everything one by one failed in work out and it kind of put me in such a big thing that you know i want to do things it's not happening my way and for a year year and a half i went through a reasonably difficult time and they said okay let's start why to wait for something to happen you know starting carnelian was not my like first plan but i said okay let's start something and i said okay look people will give me money book deal people have known me for long and then all i could do after all so many years of was about 150 or 200 crores wow all i could manage including you know everything was shock pe shock shock pe shock <laughs> but that is where i think your ego reset happens right and according to me it was one of the best thing to have happened to anyone or to me at least i can tell you that your ego reset happens that you go back to your again 
old journey and say okay let's rebuild this you know a lot of your own belief gets shattered which is fine you know but that's not fine when you are going through that it's fine in hindsight what is your definition of ego is like if i into let's say if i i approach somebody and say you known me for 10 years 15 years you say oh wow lucas you are a great guy and say okay i want to start my fund and will you give me money yeah 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 right now i'm going through difficult times i'll <laughs> give you six or you know you know let's start will do you you know you give some reason so it's a fear of failure basically you know what i'm saying you know people so ego is like you know so you get rejected so fear of rejection like you know is ego people don't don't live up to your expectation is oh how can this guy did to do this to me how can he say no to me this guy was yesterday you know uh, calling me sir and thinking times time to me and today you know i have to call him 10 times and probably he'll not pick up my phone Correct. so i mean what don't have ex- happen your way you know you feel bad and you know you start taking saying you know because you expect certain things so when things don't happen your way which you expect your ego gets hurt right that yeah. you know how- so i'm asking you because there's so much learning in this right yeah, a lot yeah. of people don't leave their comfort zone only because of the fear of failure yeah, fear of failure and yeah i like to do what we more important thing you know sabse bada rog kya kahenge log <laughs> what people will nice say nice one that is well, what people will say is actually more important than you may not need that way, but what like what played in my mind how people will think vikas khimani ceo edil was security such a big position now he is not able to raise even 200 crores such pity right how people will think that played in my mind lot more than actually my needs my needs were so taken care ever so have you dropped your fear of people's thoughts completely absolutely i absolutely I, I, that journey helped me do that because see what happens first time you know you go through go through and then you say and again partly spiritual journey helped me through that correct so then you started carnelian and then how long did it take you to sort of build it and uh, you know for it to grow no it's growing so i mean it's it's journey is still long uh, so as as we say we started with you know we were only four five people we kept on today we are 42 people we are growing so you know it now i think you know i would say that five years ago it was an idea three years ago it was a shop today it is an organization it's growing it's find its own journey i think now we have more people joining us professional joining us my dream is to build you know an organization which can be last beyond me also hmm. so you know we will keep building it we we don't we we are not doing this for money to be honest we are doing it for building you know, my my see. desire is that building something 10 20 years down the line that you know we build something great that's the desire that's it i mean god has been super kind financially and all those things were taken care so you know it's not that this is this is not money correct correct uh, you have this bharat amritkal fund that's coming up as well so tell us a little bit about that and was it your i'm sure it was your baby and your idea all together yes it was it was it came to me i mean on a morning sipping cup of tea <laughs> <laughs> that uh, you know so so a i think you know i genuinely believe that india is in a very 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 transformative phase over next 25 years as prime minister has given a call that we will be developed nation by 2047 uh, you know and when we started thinking many times what happens when you zoom in you start worrying about here now valuation nifty 20000 22000 you lose the big picture we said let's look at the big picture if this happens of all why it will happen if it happens what can be the potential opportunity and as we started working on it you know our own eyes opened i have been in market for so long but again you know in your day to day you get zoomed in but when we zoomed out our minds opened up that what are the potential happen in this country what are the potentials in this country right so as our gdp can go from 3.7 trillion dollar to 29 30 trillion dollar per capita to 18000 dollars i think massive opportunity unleashes well india is now moving from low income to middle income middle economy income, as yeah. well yeah and and you know we have once in it, i mean i call it because you know are the so many drivers of growth right so many drivers of growth but major tectonic shifts have happened in india if you ask me you know historically india why we, i believe that this time it's possible because that's very important to know right because india always had potential why it didn't reach right but this time around there are five six reasons which have changed in india we have moved from incremental mindset to exponential mindset everything we do exponentially fast and you know quick right india give me an example of that so let's say you know you you build roads at a pace which you never built you build you build 70 airports in in 70 years but today you are building 70 airports in 10 years correct right so you are doing everything at a very very rapid pace and is you are not saying that i need to take power for all in 5 years water for all in 5 you know 5 years so housing fall in 5 You, banking for all in two years. These are the examples of exponential thinking, and so are, by the way, corporate thinking. Correct. That you know. Now the compounding effect is kicking, kicking in. Kicking in, right? So it's always it starts, and then you know it's always a J curve. 
सेकेंडली इंडिया इज मूव फ्रॉम नो कंस्टेंट माइंड सेट टू नो कंस्टेंट माइंड सेट इफ यू सी इंडिया ऑलवेज सेट हम गुरा गरीब कंट्री है राइट नो वी कैन ओनली डू सो मच वी डोंट हैव मनी फॉर डिफेंस टूडे वी डोंट हेयर दैट वी हैव मनी फॉर एवरीथिंग एंड वी हैव मनी फॉर एवरीथिंग वर्ल्ड क्लास लुक एट द बैंगलोर एयरपोर्ट यू नो इट्स इट्स फिनोमिनल राइट सो वी आर बिल्डिंग एवरीथिंग वर्ल्ड क्लास विच इज ग्रेट थर्डली इंडिया हिस्टोरिकली लुक दैट टूवर्ड्स वेस्ट फॉर द सोल्यूशन टू इट्स प्रॉब्लम यू एंड वर्ल्ड बैंक विल यू नो गिव अस एडवाइजर्स टूडे इंडिया इज फाइंडिंग इट्स ओन सोल्यूशन यूनिक टू इट्स ओन प्रॉब्लम anything upi to covid to you can and many more right correct india is innovating scale at low cost again if you tell any you know foreigner that we get unlimited data in less than 2 dollars it is a you know shocker to them yeah. right so upi again that you can pay 2 rupees through it's shocker to them even right? 10 minute delivery right it's delivery nowhere shock, in the yeah, world nowhere in the yeah. world right so this is the innovation at a scale happening india is a country historically we were taught socialism or capitalism today india is dis, you know proved that social welfare and development can coexist and they are not at odds with each other we have lifted 20 crore people out of poverty in this period which is unprecedented in human history right that's a big power of india how india is thinking and lastly india does not sit at the corner when it comes to global matter we all feel see right india is driving agenda india is being assertive india is saying this is what we will do this is what we will not do india now has a seat at the table seat right? at the table at the center not only the corner right india is saying you know including you know other day jay shankar said that you know don't comment on internal matters otherwise you'll have serious repercussions right you know so i'm saying that mindset of so to my mind i always as an investor i look at what is happening at the mindset it is the mindset which creates the results so in last 10 years for corporate india for individuals as a citizen of this country government of course the mindset has changed differently we we are getting wired differently and it is this mindset change which will drive our country to the developed nation it will be a very big economic miracle of this you know next 22 decades in my opinion you know and there will be history books like how we read about many other japanese economic miracle baby boomers in us we will read about this in you know in in you know few centuries down the line that you know this is how happen to india wow and that is my belief wow that is very the case for buying india has become stronger and stronger vikas because of you <laughs> <laughs> but um, all the best for your fund by the way i'm sure it'll yeah. do very well just before we let you go we've gone on for almost an hour now and it was a great conversation what i've learned is your spiritual journey has sort of led you to this kind of professional and personal success as well you've told us about a lot of books that you've read on spirituality it was absolutely amazing chatting with you vikas i i've known you for so many years but i never knew this side to you i knew that there was a little bit of this going on <laughs> but i never knew that it has evolved to such a beautiful space and i'm so happy to see you thrive and i hope you continue to do the best that you can and and uh, all the best for your fund as well thank you thank you sonia so much uh, for for such a lovely conversation i also enjoyed it thank you so much pleasure thank you thank you for watching cnbc tv 18 for all the latest news and updates do follow us on our social media platforms